go right. Straight. Okay, so quick update here. We've um, the wheels were off and the the noise wasn't occurring, so we put the wheels back on and the noise was occurring and we figured out it was coming from this side. So right now I've pinpointed it down to either the um, tie rod end here or either the lower ball joint. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pull the tie rod end um, off and then see if the noise still happens and then um, that'll tell me that it's either the lower ball joint or the tie rod end. Okay, so I took the tie rod end off completely here and then we turned the wheel left and right and the noise was still present um, so that'll tell me that that is now the lower ball joint down here that's making the noise um, so we'll head to the store and grab a lower ball joint all right the first thing you're gonna want to do here is take a 13 16 socket and remove your wheel jack up the car using a safe um, point to jack on so the frame rail and then put a, a jack uh, underneath the frame while you're working on the car and take note to put a wheel chalk under the rear wheel while you jack up the car So it doesn't roll away next you want to remove the uh, outer tie rod and castle nut. So this is a 18 millimeter just remove the cotter pin and then remove the castle nut and hammer the uh, tie rod end down Okay, now that that's free you can Move this left and right next you'll want to remove these two 15 millimeter bolts on the back of the caliper. They're hiding back down here, there, and up here. Remove those so you can take the caliper off. Now just place the rotor off to the side. Now take a one inch uh, wrench and remove the lower spindle nut. Correction, that's a 15 16 nut. All right, now take a 21 millimeter socket and a 15 16 wrench and remove the nut and bolt two of the nut and bolts holding on the uh, strut mount. Okay, with those two bolts uh, loose now, this, if you've got a bad, uh, you know, shock, should be able to easily push out of the way um, and it won't be in your way. Okay, so I've just uh, tied up um, the end of this shock here so it's out of my way. And now I'll loosen this uh, 15 16 nut and then I'll be able to remove the entire, uh, what do you call it, caliber, caliber bracket here. Okay, now I've got it down to just the lower control arm and now I'll press this guy out. Okay, so now we're gonna press out the old ball joint. I've got a 7-8 socket on top. We're pressing down on the top of the old ball joint and then into a, a cup that will allow it to fall down since it's press fitted from the bottom up. See how it's pressing in? Slowly by slowly every time I turn it. Now I can switch to my ratchet, wherever it is. Look at that. But uh, there we go. That's the old ball joint. Okay, now I just clean this up with some spray nine. Um, some rags and then I used a bit of scuff pad on the inside here because that's where the surface of the ball joint sits when you press it in just to remove all the surface rust okay I'm gonna press this in now from the bottom and this is my setup here so this cone is gonna allow the ball joint to move up into it and then you can see the top from it there all right I've got the new um, ball joint in comes with a new castle nut and cotter pin and then this new dust boot okay new dust cover is on now I can reinstall the knuckle and then the nut okay now we can tighten the top um, uh, what do you call this the the ball joint nut to 129 foot pounds is what the spec calls for um, and then I've got my one inch socket on there Okay, so I've tightened the um, uh, castle nut and I put in the cotter pin and now I'm going to put on the lower strut bolts and they get tightened to 148 foot pounds. Okay, in order to get the uh, lower strut mount bolts on, I had to use a floor jack just under the lower control arm to raise up 
the knuckle so it aligned with the lower uh, strut mount bolts. Okay, so now we can go ahead and throw the rotor back on. And then we'll take off our mechanics wire for the brake caliber. Get it out of the way. And then put this back on. Making sure that your brake pads aren't all messed up. All right, these get tightened to 90 foot pounds. The two 15 millimeter uh, bolts. Okay, now tighten up your outer tie rod end. The castle nut on top gets tightened to 35 foot pounds. And don't forget to throw your cotter pin on there, and then you can throw your wheel on. All right, and I like to tighten these uh, lug nuts down to 110 foot pounds. Um, and now we can go for a test drive and see if that noise is gone. And if it's gone, then I'm gonna do the other side, but not on camera. All right, so that, uh, I just took the car for a drive around the block and that fixed the problem. So that's perfect. Um, thanks for watching and I hope that helped. I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay, so we finished the lower ball joint replacements replacement on this 2004 Mustang, Ford Mustang, and now this is the test drive. As you can see there, there's no squeaks in the lower ball joint like there was before. Um, that turn definitely would have had a squeak. Now let's see this left hand turn up here. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps.